So here in Granada, we're staying at the Weekendo Airbnb, uh, which is really nice. The rooms are beautiful. Everything's brand new and refurbished. And there's this communal area here. to do laundry, there's a vending machine. And look at this, you can even leave your bags if you need to. Uh, but just be careful because Weekendo don't take any responsibility in case of steel. So I'm out by myself exploring Granada right now, and it's moments like these that make the trip all worth it. You know, the five hours in the car, the flat tire last night, and this scorching sun right now, when I have this plaza all to myself with this view. Check this out. Over there we have the Alhambra, the famous palace, the mountains surrounding Granada, the cathedral, and then over here, just a hodgepodge of, you know, sanctuaries, monasteries, basilicas, you know, whatever your cup of tea is. So I'm in the neighborhood of Albacin, ooh, which is considered one of the, one of the, if not the best preserved Moorish neighborhood in the world. And, Oh, I want to take a minute while I'm giving myself a massage here to talk about the history of Spain and Andalusia. But I'm by no means an expert. So as we moved through Castilla-La Mancha into Andalusia, uh, you saw so much more influence from Arab culture and Muslim culture as you got further and further south into Andalusia. And in all of Spain in general, there are just a ton of castles and cool ruins, right? Well, these castles weren't just rich people's houses. These are actual legit war fortresses. Throughout the Middle Ages, Spain was basically just constantly in war. You had Christians fighting Christians, uh, Christians fighting Muslims, Muslims fighting Jews, basically everybody fighting everybody for the same land. So Andalusia comes from the name All Andalus, which is what the Muslim Moorish culture called the Iberian Peninsula during the Middle Ages. The Iberian Peninsula is the part of Europe that juts out and almost touches Africa. Uh, basically modern day Spain and Portugal. The Moors conquered Al-Andalus by coming up through Africa and back in their time Al-Andalus or the part of Spain that the Muslims controlled was the furthest western point of Muslim culture. During the reconquest of Spain by the Christians, Granada was considered the last stronghold of the Moorish Empire. And so when it fell, Spain became Christian. So you definitely note the Arab influence here in Granada and in all of Andalusia in the clothes, the music, and especially the architecture. The combination of having Christians, Jews, and Muslims all living in this area makes Andalusia a really unique mix of cultures. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but all that history and exercise made me really hungry. So let's meet up with the others and get something to eat. I think we're here at Bodegas Castañada. I keep recommending this thing. It's a well-recommended bar on Yelp. Yeah. You, and you, we're going to have Yelp. some tapas. Yeah. 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 Oh, 
What's up? We just left the Airbnb and now we're on our way to meet Danny with the car. He's gonna take the car to the mechanic to get a new tire and then we're all gonna meet at the Alhambra later. So we'll see you there. Okay, so we're here at the Alhambra now. You can get to the Alhambra two ways. You can walk or you can get here by car. Uh, personally, I recommend walking because you're gonna have to take the highway if you get here by car. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna do the tour. So to get into the Alhambra, it costs 14 euros just for the entrance. And then the tour is 25 euros on top of that. So we decided to go with the tour just to have some context to what we're looking at. Uh, learn a little bit about the history and the people who live there and I'll report back later and tell you if it's worth it. So I guess we were feeling extra ambitious that day because we decided to do the tour in Spanish, which was cool for about the first half hour. But with that Southern Spain heat and the lack of snacks and just the density of the information, uh, my Spanish skills burnt out pretty quick. But hey, at least I was able to find out that you can make paint with ground fish scales. I'll have to let my interior decorate them. So I'll do my best to tell the most interesting parts of the tour that I can remember. If I fudge a few facts, please forgive me. I only have a B2 level of Spanish. I'm not C1 yet. We started at the Generalife. No, not General Life. Please don't be that person. Uh, which apparently was given as a gift to a branch family of the last Muslim rulers of Granada when they converted to Christianity. And the family actually owned the site for centuries before eventually selling it back to Spain for just one peseta. Uh, that's Spanish currency before they started using the euro. The aesthetic of this place was incredible. The walls are decorated with poems and scripture from the Quran and these geometric patterns. Um, and they actually used these designs to avoid depicting living creatures because that's something that goes against Islam. So water was extremely important to the emperors of Granada because they came into Spain from drier climates. Islam was founded in the desert. Uh, so the fountains here distribute water all throughout the palace. They actually preferred fountains that made no noise because they allowed for rest and contemplation. Finally, here we have the story of the Hall of Lions. This was my favorite part of the tour. So apparently, a sultan's wife had an affair, so as any sensible disgraced sultan would do, um, he had her lover's entire family over for dinner, and he massacred them all within the Alhambra. And the story goes that their blood flowed through the fountains in the Hall of Lions. Sort of like an Islamic red wedding. So there's your Alhambra history lesson. Like I said, I only managed to listen to probably less than 50% of the tour. So if what I explained isn't exactly correct, I apologize. Yeah. We just finished the Alhambra tour. What's the consensus? Is it worth it? Oh, what? The tour or the Alhambra? The tour, paying for the tour. Not in Spanish. Not in Spanish if you're an <laughs> English speaker. Uh, eat beforehand. Yes. Pee beforehand. Pee beforehand. Because it will be three hours of walking. Without a single stop. No stop. Get water bottles. Bring a water bottle. 
and take lots of pictures. Now we're back at the car. Danny's got a non-alcoholic beer in his hands. So you know what that means. We're done here in Granada, and we're going to Malaga. That's a castle. That's a Roman theater. So that must mean we're in Malaga. I'm gonna end the video here, you guys. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you liked, if you've learned anything, and stay tuned to see the rest of our Andalusian journey. The next video, we'll be checking out Malaga. Until then, give travel.